Hey guys, Troy here, and it is time for the Triangle Pen Show. It's Friday, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is not far from where I live. I used to live in this town when I first moved to North Carolina. And right behind me is the Hilton Garden Hotel. That's where the Triangle Pen Show is going to be. I've got my hat, I've got my, my Larry t-shirt. So come with me inside, I'll try to give you a tour, give you a walk through of the show, so you, show you some of the things that I like. And then later on, I may even you know give you a nice wrap up of uh, the, the Pen Show Hall. And I'll try to come here tomorrow as well. Maybe I'll get some more footage, introduce you to a few people, and I'll be bringing my son Matthew with me tomorrow. All right, guys, here we are. We're inside the show. I just paid my admission, so let's go around the corner here. Here's the admission. I, I chatted with him about bringing something with me. One of the cool things that they do every year, every show I've been to, is they uh, you get um, a nice little tote bag and you get a Pen World magazine. Where's it going to be? Yeah, we're going to go in and ask the Pen World. We'll look it up, whatever it is. Let's go do a walkthrough. Enjoy showing off your marvelous work. I appreciate it. From the booming metropolis of Aiken, South Carolina. <laughs> yes. Actually, great town. I've got friends down there, and I go down every so often and visit. Oh, Beautiful awesome. town.
year I really tried to, but I just started writing the last one. Here we are showing you our pen haul. So uh, let's get it started because one of the things when you go to a pen show, usually in Raleigh and in DC anyway, because those are the only ones I've really been to, uh, one of the things that you tend to get is you get a tote bag, El Fribo. So um, that's always sitting there, and usually there's a sponsor to it. This time it was uh, Bertram's Inkwell. Uh, so that's what, what I got. And also, um, you know, they've got some advertising on the sides. And usually there's a few things inside, but this, but uh, let me show you what else I got. Also, Pen World Magazine is always around giving um, some of these. They are at uh, the entrance usually as you're checking in. Uh, so I've got another Pen World Magazine because, quite honestly, I'm I'm too cheap <laughs> to get the subscription. Uh, so at least uh, you know when I go to a pen show, I can get a free uh, a free Pen World Magazine. Uh, one of the things this year that they had is uh, the pay it forward table, and that was right there uh, towards the main entrance. You, go ahead. The first ever pay it forward table was last year in D.C. We were there. And they're going to celebrate their one year coming up uh, later on uh, at the next D.C. pen show. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a really cool labor of love. Uh, Oscar Rodriguez uh, coordinates that. That's... Uh, if you look here, and there's a, the website for it. Uh, yester, uh, well, yeah, yesterday, because today is the second day of the show. Yesterday, I, I spent several hours manning that table, um, and uh, you know, you got one of your pens last year from the Pay It Forward table, and you got another one this year. You want we'll, me to go get the one from last year? Yeah, that's all right. But okay. uh, um, we'll, we'll show you uh, the one that uh, he got off from that uh, Pay this It Forward year. table. And one of the things that we did is uh, we actually donated uh, pens to be able to give away. They had a bunch of pens that Oscar had been able to pick up. Um, some uh, a lot of Jin Hao kids pens that were there and they gave away an awful lot of them along with it uh, you know an ink cartridge and maybe something to write on and maybe some um, some information like that postcard and I was able to take some pens out of my collection uh, that I don't use anymore that are uh, still fairly new some of them never been used uh, and went ahead and donated those as well so some children are going to get some or if not children, then maybe even adults or people who want to take a kit and give it to somebody uh, for that. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I picked up um, the first day of the pen show. So my first m thing that I ended up getting, getting was, believe it or not, this. This is a Waterman 32V. I stopped and talked to Alan Hirsch. Uh, who is, uh, he lives in the Raleigh area, and he was there. He had a bunch of really cool pens. I was very, very tempted. He had some restored, fully restored Waterman uh, pens, and you know, uh, kind of a Waterman kind of guy. And we got to talking, and this was one of those that he had picked up just to get the nib off from it, so there's no nib on this, but it's got a great-looking body for it. The body is in fantastic shape. Uh, it's probably in better shape than the 32V. I've gotten the exact same coloring, so who knows? I may just uh, I may, may just transplant that body um, or take you know take out the section of the other one and put it in here. I don't know. But anyway, this is a he thought he said yeah it's kind of garbage to me. I got no. okay fine. He said here take it take it. Cool. Uh, as I walked around, I found another guy who is out of Wilson, North Carolina, who's a collector and he also has a bunch of pens that uh, have done really well. I'll show you a picture here on the screen. 
Uh, he had Estherbrooks, $25 to $40. Now, I bought from this guy yesterday. Matthew went back uh, today, and he bought off the same guy, and he's got a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I got two of the same thing. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll show you that later. Yeah, we'll show you all that. But while I was uh, at his table, he had uh, he'd offered up uh, this. He doesn't like the wall ever sharp skyline anywhere near as much as I do. And so this beautiful fully restored uh, ever sharp skyline was sitting there and though it's got you know someone's name on it which didn't bother me a whole lot it's been personalized way back when but uh, for the I had the got it for the right price he, he offered an, a great price on it just to get rid of it and I took it so the wall ever sharp skyline I've got one it's a great writing pen I really enjoy them and I didn't hesitate when he gave me the price I just whipped out cash and said here you go most uh, of the pins I got are free. Oh, he made it like a bandit this year. Um, a lot of people, they were just giving me some. There, there was this lady and then um, two men. Yep, we'll, we'll cover all that here in just a few. First so. we're doing day one, then day two. Now, um, I stopped by the Anderson's table, and uh, if you guys ever watch Brian and Lisa Anderson uh, do their podcast, uh, Anderson Pens, I order them for them quite a bit. I help uh, put children and potential grandchildren through college, apparently. Uh, my wife wasn't able to be there uh, because of some family circumstances uh, this year in the Raleigh show. So I kind of went shopping for her in mind, and I picked her up the now discontinued purple Rembrandt Visconti. So um, I picked that up from the Andersons, and it's, it's kind of neat. I talked to Brian Anderson again today. Um, and one of the things that he had told me was that um, he's glad that I picked it up when I did because just mere minutes after I had purchased this pen and given him the cash for it, he was messaged saying that Sony had uh, purchased the last one, which was this one, uh, from their website uh, or was, was trying to, and it turns out, no, nope, I got it instead. So uh, my wife now has a Visconti uh, Van Gogh. Now, they're going to ship me the box because, you know, they, they didn't take the box along with some of these pens. So hopefully when he ships me the box, also will come the converter. <laughs> All that <laughs> belongs to it. Um, fortunately, I've got some converters here, and we inked it up, and it writes very, very nicely. And speaking of ink, while at the Anderson's table, I picked up another bottle of Waterman ink. This one is uh, Mystery Blue, and uh, so I just added that. I mean, um, I was running low on uh, Waterman ink as it was. So then, one of the things I invested in, um, and this pen was being put together while I went ahead and did um, a seminar that Ron Zorn uh, was, uh, had put together. I went to his seminar last year. It's supposed to be on general pen repair. Last year, he kind of specialized on vacuumatics uh, by Parker for some reason. Uh, this year, however, um, he uh, was doing just general pen repair. So I, I signed up for that, and I've got in this box finally picked up my very first Franklin Kristoff, a Model 31, and uh, it comes in this gray bag. He showed me one yesterday, and I mean today. Yep, uh, they had one left like this on the table, so this is their Model 31, and it's got the purple on the end, and from what I'm told, that is, um, this particular pen is a prototype color that they had released, uh, and it was for the Philadelphia show. So this is my very first Franklin Kristoff. FC has been on my list for a while. So I got that. I got to test out the various nibs. You go to the Franklin Kristoff table if you can get there. Fortunately, this show was a little less trafficked um, than I had seen elsewhere. But I was able to, the DC pen show was mobbed. Last year, part uh, on Friday, the, the pen, uh, the DC, uh, I mean, excuse me, the Franklin Kristoff table was absolutely mobbed. So I was able to get there to, uh, yesterday and spec out what I wanted. So I got my very first Franklin Kristoff. But and this was a lot less easy, harder. I mean, yeah, a lot less harder to get there. Yeah, so it's only an hour and a half. I mean, a half an hour drive. Yeah, it's about forty. You know, thirty-five minutes or so, maybe forty from where we are. So. But the DC one, there was a lot of traffic on the way. Yeah, well, it's also a much longer drive. Yep. So here's what else I ended up getting. Um, 
you know, I, I was looking at Waterman's and I was really tempted. I tell you, some of those were awesome, awesome looking. A lot of vintage pens there this year and different dealers that had them. But I got this right here. Uh, this is a, a Waterman display case that you would have had in a retail store. And they, you would have had this tray laying here. It's got the Waterman logo right down there. And uh, you about falling off your stool there, kiddo? So you would have pens kind of just laying in that tray like, like that. this in and in perhaps in a glass case or on top of a counter. Um, so I picked up this and you know, then the guy kind of threw in this one. He said, you like Waterman stuff? There you go. Here's another one. Free. I said, okay. You know, it's kind of old and grungy. Could use a little bit of cleaning. Uh, but it's just, you know, plastic uh, you know, with, with that little plastic deal there. And that's all it is. It's just, it's, um, it sits there uh, that would sit like inside a glass case or on a countertop with some pens on display. So I picked up both of these. Ten bucks. I got both of these for like ten bucks. So. I got a lot of more free pens than him. You did. So let's... Uh, he got nothing free today, but yesterday I think he only got one of them. Yep. So this that's everything that, that I got yesterday my first day at the show I got some video footage I got some pictures in hey guys Troy and Matthew yeah we are here this is day two of the uh, triangle pen show here in Raleigh North Carolina we're here at the Hilton Garden Inn um, I was here yesterday while he was in school so uh, we're gonna go in together it's Saturday and we're gonna see what we can find so we'll take you with us I've already uh, done a walking tour of it yesterday and uh, we'll try to come up with some cool finds and we'll do a, a pen haul video later on. What do you think you're gonna get today? I don't know, I'll try to find some nice pins I can afford. All right, talk to you guys later. We'll show you what we get. So let's go over what, what you've gotten because as soon as we got there, um, you know, he uh, checked out the pay it forward table and that is one that they had yesterday that's kind of hoping and Oscar set that aside to make sure Matthew would be able to get it. Oscar, um, um, he was the first one that invented the pay it forward table and he gave me this. Yep, that is what? The Pilot Petite. And yep. uh, that's kind of been on the shopping list for a little while, so he's got one of those in his collection now. It's nice. Um, is, is this the only color he had? That's the only one he had. So the only one there, and you got it. So we go inside, we're looking around, and we, we stop by a couple different tables. And uh, one of the first tables, yeah, this kid, it's kind of funny, because, um, you know, here he is, um, and... Uh, you know, he's eight years old right now, and he walks right up and looks at a nice, expensive pen and is asking, well, how much is this? <laughs> and knowing it's good, I, I knew it was going to be way out of his budget. But uh, So we went by this one guy where I told you, since you want to do that one next? Yes. Okay, well, I bought this from this one guy. 
Um, I think his name was Brian. I think off the top of my head, I got his card laying here. But the guy who's a collector in, in the next county over from where we're sitting. And so um, he had this big box full of pens that were he had just collected and picked up, at, I guess, at yard sales or whatever. Um, and he had just... Uh, he had some ball points, he had some fountain pens, and he had uh, some vintage ones. Some were broken, some probably going to need some tender loving care. Nothing over $5 he wrote on the box. So I saw these two yesterday, and I thought of uh, Matthew here. I got all of these for just $4. Well, actually, the deal is you got this. He gave you this one free. Yeah. Look at this one. So, it's just a. It's a. You can't miss yeah, this ballpoint. Yeah, I got point. this from there too. These three were just four four dollars. Right. So he. Uh, so he goes up. Check this one out. Go ahead. Open up that one. Is it twist or pull? Yeah. Twist. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You twist it, and it's actually a pull top. There you go. So that's another one uh, that is actually it's a, a ball, it's a ball we, point. We thought it was a fountain pen. No, we knew it was. I knew it was a ball point. Well, I thought it was fountain because because of the way it's shaped. Yeah. But it is pretty cool. I mean, novelty pens, and this one's that one there is from the Bahamas, a uh, place you you and I have both been. Better, I mean, yeah. It's Bit, is bigger in the Bahamas. Yeah, and it is according to that pen. Look at the size of it. So you're not going to miss that. All right, let's go put those down. And the next pin. And so we've already gotten that one. And that one. We've looked at this one. And, and this one here um, was kind of a was a brand I'm not really familiar with, but I'll have to. It's a lever filler, so I'm going to have to work on this one. Uh, it's an old uh, lever filler. Okay, and you know this 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 kid. Uh, They had a deal. Crazy Allen's Emporium. Crazy Allen from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. He's uh, at a lot of the East Coast shows. And Pilot Varsity. Uh, we, Matthew saw this one Pilot Varsity for, what, 3 or $4? Picked it up. And uh, I said, okay, we'll throw it in our order. So Allen says, hey, you know, those are like 4 for 10 um, Okay, why not? This is mine. This is my mom's. I bought this for him, and this was going to be for my brother, He, but my dad said, he He's still he a little young. He's still a little young. Uh, yeah, he's just not quite there yet to, to have one. But So we got four Pilot Varsities. So this is just a spare. Maybe you will give it away, maybe not. Yep. All right, so what else we got? Um... Andy Lambrew just handed him a, gave him a uh, ballpoint. I'm like, where are the free pins? <laughs> yeah. He said, over there. And they the Hilton Garden. <laughs> they got Hilton Garden on us. It wasn't even Andy's pen. That was funny. Oh, uh, let's see. All right, let's 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 show some of the other stuff you got um, and, and tell why you got them. I got this. We um, we did the scavenger hunt. I think this is it. No. No, but I don't have it here. But we, yeah, uh, they have a scavenger hunt for kids. Yeah, we did the scavenger hunt. The, the PCA Pen this Collectors is what Association. We did, and this is she said, pick out a pen from these two cups. I I told her I picked this. It was between a black one and this. So you, I yeah. picked this. He had two green ones. I thought for sure he was going to go for one of the green because green's his favorite color. But I know, but no. This is just cooler. And all of the other ones were Parker, I mean Schaefer, but this is pen and ink sketch. Yeah, pen and ink sketch. So Never heard of it. Not before, familiar with it myself either. But, but he will be now. So. Yeah, oh, maybe it's a pole. Yep, there you go. But, All right. So another one that um, there was another guy that we were it's looking medium at. Medium point. Um, the guy. Um, 
Parker 51 guy, um, they, they gave you this one here. Yep. One of the things about the scavenger hunt, it takes you to a lot of different tables and you're looking for various things. So whether you, you're looking for a vintage Parker 51, you're looking for places that do repairs, you're ink looking for sack. an ink sack, you're looking for a bottle of ink, an inkwell, a dip pen. So we stopped at all kinds of tables. All right, so someone gave him one of these, a Thornton's Novice, and I'm familiar with these. These are disposable fountain pens. We got some, uh, he has it in his office. He gave me one, one night, and now this is my second in my collection. The rest are black, but this is just a different kind, till blue. All right. Moving on to the next one, and it's the last one. The most expensive one I got, but it was free. <laughs> it was free. There's this one table uh, where they had a lot of vintage pens. They had some that were you know, five for a hundred bucks uh, or twenty-five dollars a piece. Or they had another um, box. And they were fifty dollars a piece. Had another box, some seventy-five dollars a piece. And uh, you could take your pick of what was whatever was in those boxes. And I had a few that kind of intrigued me uh, yesterday and again today. So we're standing there looking. Matthew walks right up, points to this waterman sitting on the table I know, in, in a box. First. And I'm looking at the ten dollars, but then I'm like, "How much do you want for that Waterman?" Right. So it had a Waterman CF sitting there in a box, um, and so Matthew points to it, asks how much it is. Now I know how much these generally are uh, when much? you buy them on eBay, uh, and you know, forty to fifty bucks is a fair price for for but one. I oftentimes. got it for free. But they just picked it up. They looked at it, and, and so the, this lady leans over and um, asks. Um, the the man who's running the booth, he, and they're like, yeah, just give it to him. And so he's got a free Waterman CF. And that's it's a good thing that I'm into Waterman CFs. So I got four of them at, uh, of my own. This is my first. This is my second Waterman. Right. But first Waterman CF, I got one for Christmas, and now I got one from. The Raleigh Pin Show. Yep. So I've got Waterman CF cartridges uh, that we can uh, ink it up and. And you know, we'll, we'll uh, flush it out, ink it up, and you'll have your very own Waterman CF here in your collection. And I think you're going to like it. Every Waterman CF I've got so far um, has been a great writer. I think you're going to enjoy it. And I got a few more things. That was the last pin, but... Yeah, a couple of ink samples. I got this ink. It is Diamine Pumpkin. Um, and this is Oroshizuku Furigake. Fuyagaki. 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 Now it sounds like a, something on a menu at a Japanese restaurant. I know, but I could not pronounce this. Now. And it came like this. One more thing. What were you wanting? I want. I what? was wanting a pin case. What? This is a knock co. Yep. And uh, one of the things, uh, knock. Um, this is the inside. One side is just plain, and the other side has three small sleeves. And he bought that with his own money. Cost 40 bucks. <laughs> so it's got ballistic nylon, Brad Dowdy, um, for, for those of you who are uh, familiar with the Pen Addict at, at blog, he also owns Notco. Um, so he was there, as a matter of fact, we got a picture of you and him together, and we'll put that up here on the screen. And so Matthew, with his own money, Specked uh, out, picked yes. his own knock pen case. There were orange, blue, black, and red. Yep. And I think there was a purple, but I got this instead. Now, one of the things uh, that I picked up. This was the best looking. Because I needed them and I've been wanting to do it, um, this is something that was a necessary thing in my kit. If you don't have these bulb syringes uh, in your cleaning kit, you're gonna need them, so two for five bucks. I got that from the Indie Pen Dance table, uh, and uh, been needing the replacements because I literally wore mine out. Where I, I cut a, uh, I wore a hole slap in it because I, I flush an awful lot of pens. I was gonna buy some new ones anyway uh, with my next pen order from. He flushes a lot. Yeah, so does your brother because he, he's in the bathroom a lot. <laughs> <laughs> my older one, he's always taking a long time. One of the other things that uh, we picked up, I told you we went to Crazy Allen's where we got those Pilot Varsities. Yep. I use a lot of these. Uh, little little Rhodia pads. And these ones are dot pads. 
the ones I'm used to are lined, but they're only like three dollars a piece, so I, I picked up a, a couple of those. I got a plain sheet notebook in my room. And um, another Rhodia dot pad. I use a lot of these too. So for for some reason, I kind of like Rhodia. I've been using Rhodia a lot more than Claire Fontaine or some of the others. So um, anyway, I kind of needed to add those to my collection. Now there's one guy that's kind of a fixture, and uh, he's a fairly well known name. And uh, Andreas Lambrou. If you guys have ever run across him at pen shows, he's a staple at some of the, the pen shows, especially on the East Coast. Uh, he's got some great pens. I've seen reviewed the LB5. Uh, at his table, he'll have pens usually, I, you know, I'll, about a thousand dollars or about the average, maybe in up for some of the pens I looked at. So you're talking some good money. He's also starting to do some, a lot of collaboration together with Ryan Krusak, um, who he's the first vendor you see is Ryan when you get to the show. And Ryan's a good Christian brother. Um, I, I like Ryan, and uh, he and his, his wife Julia and their children, just a wonderful family. Ryan's been doing some custom work for Andy Lambro. He signed the limited edition pin. He showed me number 46. The limit is 150. Right. On, on the scavenger hunt, you had to find a limited edition. He makes no more. Right. So he's been doing some work, and Jonathan Brooks uh, from Aiken, South Carolina, with Brooks Pens, has been doing some Marushi work for Andy Lambro. So they've got some collaboration on that. We've been looking at those pens and going, oh, I wouldn't mind having one. But for those of you um, who are into books uh, for the fountain pens, this is. That's uh, a big. big book. I mean, Andy Lambro's Fountain Pens of the World. Now, normally you're going to find these on Amazon uh, for well over $100. Um, 175 I think, is the going rate, Andy was saying, um, for a brand new. It's a big old coffee table book. And what, what I was able to do is I picked this up for about $90. Uh, today, rather than uh, paying the full 175, he said I'll ship it for 175. At a show, I've got a special going on him, and he knocked another ten dollars off. So you know, he signed it there for me. He and so um, he told me there was only two of them that he had uh, at the show. So we got to talking, and, and I said, yeah, I was kind of interested in one, but we had just gotten there, so we kept walking. And I said, I'll come back here, and he says, well, I only got two. So, um, And then um, we're halfway through walking around the show, and he comes up, he says, I only got one left. Um, and Because someone just bought it, so since you were interested, I'm going to give you the opportunity. Okay, Andy, here. Whip out some cash out of my wallet right then and there, standing in an aisle. And he says, I'll have it signed and ready for you for pickup. So Fountain Pens of the World, Andy Lambro. I got a picture with him and Ryan Krusak together with Matthew as well. So I'll put up that picture. Um, and that pretty much is our pen haul from the Triangle Pen Show 2018. So anything you wanted to add? I was smiling like I just killed your dog. <laughs> he was taking. We were doing one particular picture, um, and uh, he had a horrible smile on his face. And I was telling him, "You, you got. Come on, that's like kind of a creepy, creepy smile. Um, the, the I, yeah, I, I just killed your dog kind of smile. Uh, so, yeah, got him to finally change his smile. But uh, that's what he's joking about. We were talking about he's smiling like, like I just killed your dog. <laughs> anyway, anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up our video? That's our pen show haul for the two of us. Now, keep in mind, this is a doesn't look like it, but there's a lot of money sitting on this table. But I cannot believe I got this for uh, Waterman free. CF, that shocked me. I'm thinking I need to become a child again and have people just I give know. me stuff. I know. I was just like, I thought they were going to make me give them money, but no, I got it for free. I thought that they were... the they way were They were really nice. I thought the way they were talking, they were going to give you a discounted price. Uh, that they were going to say, yeah, you know what, it's an old pen, and we've probably had it for a while, and... Uh, you know he's a he's a little kid. He's probably got a little bit of money, um, or will his, he'll con his dad into buying it. Well, he actually had his own spending money. I know. I um, thought they were just gonna offer it for like twenty twenty some dollars for me. I thought they were just gonna give you a really good price, but they just said, "Here, have it." So. I was surprised. Cool score, buddy. Oh, and he saw a Mont Blanc made in Germany. It was made during World War Two. Yep, and who, do you remember who had that on his table? 
No, but I know it was made in World War II. I do not know who <laughs> Ron Zorn. He does uh, pen repair. And uh, uh, maybe I'll put up his website here. He was the one who gave the seminar. I got a picture of Ron here as well. And um, one of the things, it, he uh, Main Street Pens, I think, is his uh, is his business. Yeah, he and, had a sign up that said Main Street Pens. Right. And he, had, uh, he did have several pens that he was offering for sale, some rare. And one of them was a Mont Blanc war made in Germany. Um, we, you know, here they're trying to uh, use everything for the war effort uh, during that time period, and they still had uh, some Mont Blanc production, and it didn't have any you know ring caps or anything like that. But um, he had uh, he had it, and it was like five thousand bucks because it's so rare. Because it's very seldom do you have them, much less have them available, much less have them available in America. So. Is that it? Let's wrap up the video. All right. Well, that was it. That was our pen show haul uh, from the Triangle Pen Show 2018. I am your father. Is that kind of the other way around? Luke? Lightsaber. Uh, I, know. I am your father. All right. That, that's it. Thanks for watching. Talk Bye.